హలో ఇది టాటిక్ so what did we discuss in our last lecture hmm is the screen visible okay so we discussed uh, Markov inequality, and then we discuss Chebyshev inequality. And then what did you do? Uh, all of you log off. There will be this one. Yeah. So what did we discuss after that? There no. So what was Markov inequality? Is this true for any random variable? Only non-negative random variables. Then what is Chebyshev? Just apply Markov inequality on y equal to h minus expected h whole square. Right? and apply markov and what is chernoff bound so you can apply markov inequality on y equal to e4 lambda h. so is there any assumption on this and this y yeah so if you take lambda greater than 0 then we get probability h greater than or equal to epsilon is same as probability e sorry probability e power lambda h is greater than or equal to e power lambda epsilon this is true only if uh, lambda is greater than zero so if you want to then we prove something right? if you assume that x is a Gaussian distribution then uh, Expected e power lambda x has a particular form. What was it? If x was Gaussian, what what is uh, expected e power lambda x? E power lambda square by two. Gaussian in the sense normal zero mean and variance sigma square. Actually, this is true for any lambda. This particular uh, thing. Okay. This has nothing to do with the lambda being positive. But this equality will hold on. Right? Because if lambda is negative, let's say e power minus x, then x greater than or equal to epsilon, you can play. E power minus h is less than or equal to minus h. E power h. Right? So, what I'm saying is, uh, if, you want, if you want a bond on this, 
what can you do if you want something this is same as probability of e power lambda epsilon greater than or equal to e power lambda epsilon if lambda less than zero. if lambda is So you can after that you can do the same thing. So for every lambda, this is like a Markov run. This is a Markov run because it was positive. Positive. So you can apply Markov inequality on that. Correct. So even if you want less, lambda to be negative. Right, and uh, from here, so then power Lambda epsilon, and what you have to take to get the epsilon? If you want for any lambda less than zero, this is true. If you want a good bond, what should you do? You do infimum over lambda less than zero. This thing, right? And that is the constant. This epsilon. the remaining proof will almost will go through so all that i want to say is uh, the same inequality will hold for gaussian in the sense that what did we get for gaussian after proving all that we got this to be less than or equal to epsilon square uh, this is what we got if you remember like after taking the infimum this is what we got so if you follow the same procedure except with lambda negative you will get uh, the same thing okay for for uh, normal zero okay any doubt you know fine everyone is fine so Right. So why is my new random variable, which is a positive random variable, right? Irrespective of lambda, whether being positive or negative, e power lambda is always positive. So now, what can we say about probability mod x greater than or equal to epsilon? From this, about the third one. Any uh, trivial bound that you can give? Not less than or equal to one. Something not as trivial as one, but something else. Yeah. Did you study union bound? What is union bound in probability? Probability of A union B is less than or equal to probability of A plus probability of B. So this is like a union, right? Probability X is greater than or equal to epsilon or probability X is less than or equal to Minus epsilon or epsilon. Right? This is same as this, right? And, and anyway, either what do we get? This is less than or equal to these two probability. And then we can get. Okay. 
Mm, actually, uh, this. Actually, this thing is true only for lambda epsilon positive. This is true only for epsilon negative. So, if we want to be consistent, we can keep like this. So, this is less than or equal to 2 times. Okay. So you can carefully work this out, but the high level idea is that you just take lambda negative and uh, you get, uh, after that you apply Markov inequality, then you can get whatever you want. Okay. So you can uh, try it properly to, if you are a little bit confused about the sign of epsilon, maybe you can just go home and try it once. Uh, everything will work out fine. Okay. So. Uh, so similarly, we can go through the subplots in lambda. Because all that we have used is uh, this inequality. And for subplots in lambda, we know that expected lambda x is less than or equal to expected lambda square sigma square by 2. Right? So the same thing will go through for uh, sub Gaussian and number equation. Yeah, so this is roughly what we discussed. Then we defined what is the sub Gaussian random variable, and then uh, we understood that there are a couple of, uh, there are a lot of random variables which can be proved as sub Gaussian. Like, uh, what is one such uh, example that we have seen? For any bounded random variable, uh, we can say, so that it is a sub Gaussian. Actually, uh, Sub Gaussian, when we talk about sub Gaussian random variable, we always talk about random variables whose mean is equal to zero. Like, just like how, how you see, like, when we talk about sub Gaussian random variables, like, uh, according to this definition, this is what we want, right? Expected lambda x is less than or equal to e power. This is what we want, right? This is the definition of sub Gaussian, which we have. Code, which I have taken. Let's see sub Gaussian. Uh, let's see sub Gaussian if there is this sigma greater than zero such that this is true for all lambda. This is the definition of sub Gaussian. X is called a sub Gaussian random variable if there exists any sigma such that this is true. And uh, in particular, we call this sigma sub Gaussian. Okay. No, it has not. You come up with whatever sigma you want and show this inequality. And then you call it sigma sub Gaussian. Actually, in, if anyone has looked at the exercises which I have given yesterday, I have uploaded a problem set on Hello Yet. Okay? There, uh, we have a statement connecting the variance of H with sigma. So, one of the exercises is prove that uh, variance of H is less than or equal to sigma square. Okay. So, it's not, it's not the variance of this random variable, but what we can prove is the variance of H, any H which satisfies this inequality, will be at most sigma square. Yeah, that's wrong. Please correct it. So this is the correct. It's not. It should not. That's the definition of sigma sub Gaussian. Thanks for point. Mean of h. We can prove that. You need not even assume that. You you show this. Much. Then from this, you can prove that. Like we need not even assume that. So that we can derive from this. So that was also one of the exercises. Like uh, 
if any subcaution and a variable has these two properties that uh, the expected value of x is zero and the variance of x is at most sigma squared. These are two properties which a subcaution and a variable will satisfy. Okay, so this is what it is. Okay, so, so let's now that we have uh, studied uh, some, now that we have uh, studied uh, some uh, way to bond. How close the sample mean is to the true mean of a random variable. Now we want to see with this much of uh, theoretical understanding on how random variables and the means work, can we prove some uh, guarantees for our algorithms? Which was what was the algorithm? One algorithm was ETC, which was explore first and then commit. So anyway, I have described that in detail and just writing it uh, just for the sake of it. So explore or plane. So I'm making a slight modification. Instead of uh, saying each arm m by k times, I'm just saying each arm uh, m times just for our play each arm m times. So if there are k arms, you use the first k m slots for explore. Okay. Now I'm just changing it a little bit. Instead of saying explore each arm m by k times, I'm just saying explore each arm m times. Uh, and then uh, select the arm with the highest sample average. And play it forever. So this is the ATC algorithm. Right? So uh, I think uh, few people are a little bit confused about the notations which are used. So maybe I'll just uh, uh, re-emphasize the notation. So whenever I say new of a, this is a true mean of the random variable corresponding to army, the reward corresponding to army. So if I don't use any bar, that is true mean. Okay. A true expected reward. Okay. So when I mean mu t bar of a, this is the sample average of the rewards obtained. The sample average of the rewards of arm a till time t. So till time t, you might have, let's say you have played only one time. Arm A has been played only one time, then it's just a sample average of one sample. If arm A has been played 10 times, it will be sample average of those 10 times. So this is not, this t does not mean you have played arm A two times. This t is just a till time t, you might have explored arm A from You just take the sample average of that many times. So just uh, we can use another notation to have how many times we have played after So the NT of A is uh, number of times arm A is played till round T. Okay. And mu t bar a of a is a sample average of arm a in round t. So when I play it, I'm going to the number of times. So in the other
सो दिस रोटेशन में सो एंड ए स्क्वायर वी डिनोटेड हैज द आर्म विथ द बेस्ट ट्रू मीन ओके ए स्क्वायर इज द ऑप्टिमल आर्म अकॉर्डिंग टू द ट्रू मीन ओके व्हिच इज आर्ग मैच ओवर दे म्यू ऑफ इट not new bar of it new of it okay and mu star is what what is mu star new of a star okay we also denote what is called uh, delta of a which is the suboptimality of arm a okay how much are How much suboptimal is an arm A? What is this equal to? Mu star minus mu of A. Okay. So this is the best that can be. Delta of A. Okay. So any kind. Confused in this notation? Everyone is comfortable. Okay. So we now start analyzing the algorithm. So, so we have, let's consider k equal to two case. Like there are only two arms. Uh, to to keep the analysis simple, let's assume there are only two arms. Okay. Hmm. So what are we doing now? We are playing arm. Let's call them arm A and arm B. Okay. There are two arms, arm A and arm B. Okay. And we are playing each arm m times. Okay. So this one we play m times. This one also we play m times, and what do we do after that? Uh, we'll find new new bar of a and new bar of b, and whichever has the highest sample average, we play that for the remaining rounds. So after having m samples of a, what uh, confidence do we have about that estimate? So let's say, uh, what is the sample average of arm a after Uh, how many time slots are we exploring? Totally, two m slots. So according to our notation, this is the sample average of army after first trip, two m slots because at time t equal to two m, we would have played army m times, arm b m times, and uh, so that's why we need two. But number of times we have played army m. Okay, but anyway, since it is very clear from this context, I'm just removing that, just to keep sim things simple. So you just think new bar of a is the sample average of arm a after the exploration round. Okay, and then new bar of b is what we have got for arm b. And then what contents do we have about arm new bar of a? Based on let's say order Chernow bonds were derived, right? So mu bar of a is random because it's everything that you know. So for R n times, I will get one mu bar of a. If I repeat the experiment again, then it will be like it is such a random line. And uh, what is the Guarantee that we have of this random variable after examples. So the true mean of this random variable is mu of a. This is the true mean of this random variable. This is what we are observing. What is the probability that this is Very 
So if you use Chernoff bond, what is the bond that we are having? 2 into H of minus epsilon square by 2 sigma square, right? Because it's like I'm putting 2 here. Where is this? And what did we prove? Let's assume for simplicity, our random variables are bounded between 0 to 1. Assume. Assume rewards belongs to 0 to 1. Okay, so that this uh, is simple, and we are having bounded rewards. Now the rewards are between zero and one. So, based on uh, what we have seen here, yeah. huh? Yeah. So where will M come here? Huh? Yeah. Because uh, the variance of mu bar of a will be sigma square by m because we have got m samples right that we derived in last class correct okay so and what did we uh, what do we know about uh, the any random variable what is is it a sub gaussian random variable any random variable with bounded support is a sub Gaussian random variable, right? And what is the uh, sigma? B minus A by 2. So that is for this particular case, what is sigma? Half. If you substitute that, what do we get? Using uh, sigma equal to B minus A by 2 for Using sigma equal to b minus a by 2, what do we get? We get sigma equal to half. So I think if we are indirectly using the halving inequality in class, class, the last exercise was halving inequality, right? So we are just getting halving inequality from this. So what do we have now? This is less than or equal to 2 times epsilon of. Minus two epsilon square correct. If you just substitute sigma square equal to one by four, this is what we'll get, right? Everyone is fine till now. So yeah. The last exercise was not for uniform. Any bounded random. We haven't proved that, we just stated it. So for any bounded random variable, you can show that it is a sigma sub Gaussian with uh, B minus A by 2 as the sigma. Okay. Everyone is fine. So now what we'll do is so, so for every for we have to if you update this equal to some way, you get some way for uh, mu bar of a. So what is it telling that uh, your mu bar of a belongs to mu of a minus epsilon comma mu of a plus epsilon with some high probability, let's say. Okay. So depending on what you choose your m as, uh, you can... If you choose M sufficiently long, this will be true with high probability, right? Similarly, what do we know about mu bar of B? Mu of B minus epsilon to mu of B plus epsilon with high probability, okay? So now there are we will do the analysis in two uh, scenarios. Like these are some probability. That means with some probability, this this interval could be long. With some probability, long to this interval. Correct. With a good probability, this will belong to this interval. But with some probability, it might not belong to this interval. So we'll uh, we'll 
divide our analysis into these two scenarios. Scenario one, our interviews are Okay, our intervals are wrong. Scenario two, our intervals are wrong because that is also positive, right? With some probability, intervals can be wrong, right? So let's say the intervals are wrong. Okay, if the intervals are wrong, uh, we give up our hands and say that we'll insert the worst case possible decrease. Okay. What is the worst frequency that we can have? It is T. Because our, uh, our, uh, our uh, the worst case that we can have and whatever is instead of one. Right? Because the best arm let's say has one, but you are playing an arm with mean zero. So then for each time step, you'll have an interest of one, right? So you're playing for T rounds. So what is the worst case that you can have? T, because every round you at most enter one. Because the best is one, you're playing zero. So let's say you enter one for every round. So totally in the worst case, you'll have a regret of T, right? So what we'll do is, we'll assume that whenever if, if this interval is wrong, so we are, we are saying that let's say these intervals are wrong, then we'll give our hands up and say that we'll incur a regret of T in that case. Okay. So what we want, we want expected regret, right? We want expected regret. What is regret defined as? Regret is defined as uh, mu star t into the mu star into t minus sigma over t equal to 1 to t mu of a t. This is the So now we are we want expected regret. Now we can what we are doing, we are dividing it into two cases. One case where our intervals are correct, one case where our intervals are wrong. So maybe I'll give those two scenarios a name. So let's say uh, two cases. Let's call uh, then good event and bad event, let's say. There are two cases, good, good event and bad event. Uh, good event means uh, our intervals are correct. And bad event means intervals are wrong. Okay, so everyone understood this definition. Right? So, if the intervals are correct, I'm calling them good events. The intervals are wrong, then I'm calling them bad events. Now, uh, what they want, they want expected regret. I can uh, write the expected regret like this, right? Expected regret given good event. Into probability of good event plus what else I should write? Expected regret given bad event into probability of bad event. These are the intervals I mean. Okay. Yeah. yeah, at least one of the wrong has the wrong interval. That's what I mean. Bad event means 
at least one interval is known. Okay, so both of at least one of the interval is wrong. Okay, everyone is fine till now. So, this term can be bound. We have a so this term, what is the trivial bound? This is less than or equal to three. So, so we will so if if we don't right because as a so to balance to balance If you that this one, what should I do? If there is a constant It is bad. We want this to be this one. So we can do So if you want that to be one by t, what should you do? How do how can we get one by t? What is in our control? What is in our control? M is in our control, right? How many times you want to explore is in our control? So you choose M such that this term is less than one by T. Is it clear to everyone? Because this is really bad. Okay. Okay. One by T is one. So no, that's not with respect to number of samples and all that. That t is different, this t is different. So don't get confused with that. So you just use this and get this term. Can you tell me what m will give us? Uh, Not what M. So let's say so let's say you have six six M you have six M. What so what will be epsilon? Find epsilon if I take this we want this to be less than or equal to what? We want this to be less than or this whole thing to be less than or equal to. 1 by t or 2 by t, let's say. So let's say you want this to be less than or equal to 2 by t. OK. Then can you tell me what epsilon will satisfy this? Just do it and tell me. And also, if we want, uh, if we define the bad end, what is going on? And what is the probability that at least one of the interval goes wrong? So this is the probability that one of the interval goes wrong. It's the probability that 
order the property that it is one of the odd principle is wrong if you use union bond again what will you get 4 into this thing which because it is the right Is it clear for everyone? This is the probability that one arm will go wrong. What is the probability that like one of the two arms will go wrong? This is less than or equal to the probability that arm A goes wrong plus probability that arm B goes wrong, which is like four into epsilon, sorry, it's of that. Okay, maybe we can take that to be less than or equal to, this is less than or equal to two by T. So we want the probability that, uh, bad arm the probability of bad event is what we want the probability of bad event is probability that arm a interval is wrong or arm b interval is wrong, right? Because at least one of the interval uh, should go wrong. That is a bad event. This is less than or equal to probability arm A interval is wrong. If you use union bond here, probability arm B interval is wrong. And what is the total sum is less than or equal to two, four into, like this is less than or equal to two into that. This is also less than or equal to that. So totally we'll get okay because of the union bond. Everyone is fine with this. So now let's say we want we want it to be less than or equal to four by t. We want to choose, we want to make the bad event uh, probability very low. So let's say this is what we want. And then what is it? Uh, M uh, epsilon equal to? We want to choose. We want to choose uh, the probability of bad event to be less than or equal to 4 by t. Okay. Then what will it give us? Did anyone calculate? So let's say this is a bad event. Hmm. What do we get if you take log? Okay, so if you take this if you take this epsilon, then our bad event probability will be equal to four by t. Right? Is this calculation correct? Okay. So if you choose this epsilon, then our bad event probability is uh, log t root log t by two m. Okay. So let's choose that epsilon. Okay. So you have uh, you have m. You have arm trails. Then after that, if you the probability that the, your arms to me is growing as one by t. Correct. Okay. So now let's uh, keep this. So now this part is taken care. So this part is like uh, is less than or equal to four by t. So this whole thing is fine. Now this term you have taken care. There is nothing to worry about. It's a constant regret. It's not growing in terms of t. Now what is that we can worry about? This property has a right? 
1 minus 4 by 2. Correct? So, 1 minus 4 by 2. So, so, what is that? So, we supply your entity. Then we are done. Right? That's the main aim, right? We don't want the regret to be linearly growing entity. Then it's a bad algorithm. Because even playing any arm at random will give you a linear regret. Right? So, now we are taking care of this. Now we have to. So let's say our intervals are correct. Then what is the regret that will incur? Just because our intervals are correct doesn't mean that we'll pick the best term, right? There is still a probability. Even if the intervals are correct, we can still uh, get confused about which is the best term, right? Understood? So now we have taken care of the bad event. Let's analyze the good event. So what is the good event? That mu bar of A belongs to mu of A minus epsilon to mu of A plus epsilon. This is given for us. So condition on this, let's say someone uh, what is the expected regret given good event? That's what we want to find, right? In this expression, that is what is left, right? What is the So let's assume that B is the best arm according to the true mean. So let's see like this. Let's say this is our real uh, line. And let's say your mu of A, the true mean of A is here. Okay, let's say this is increasing, like this is the real line. And uh, let's say mu of b is here. So now what are we saying? We have some bound on, we have some interval around uh, a. Sorry. Let's say some interval around A and some interval around B. Okay. And what is delta here? This is the difference is the delta, right? Delta is the difference between what was delta of A? Delta of A is the suboptimality of arm A, right? So here I'm just calling it delta because there is only one arm which is suboptimal. So delta is, uh, I'm defining this delta of A, okay? Delta is mu B minus mu A. So now what are these bounds? What are these intervals? This is epsilon, right? This is also epsilon. Correct? So when is there any regret in this case? Let's say this interval is correct. Uh, if we have regret delta, Will we incur any regret? Why? Because we take will So, if you are a player, it will be easier. So, then you will be a player, right? Absolutely. So, you will not be able to be a player. You will not be able to be a player. But if you are a So, I think sometimes you are a player, and we will be able to be a player. You will not be so that means the best one the next step. Like only the exploitation is the best one. Is that correct? If two have been on, if two have been on, that is if two have been on, then go over the Is this clear to everyone? If there is no one, that means. Correct? Uh, this is a crucial point. I just want to make sure everyone understands this. Is this clear to everyone? Like I am claiming that uh, if uh, 
two epsilon is less than delta, uh, we'll pick the best term. After the exploration, if because it is not so in the exploitation phase, you won't have any regret. Everyone is clear? So this is one case. What is the other case? Like the other case is, let's say you have, this is your mu of A, and this is your mu of V. If mu of Okay, so this is the other case. Is it clear? So this will happen when? For this to happen, you this will happen only if delta is less than 2 epsilon. If delta is not less than 2 epsilon, then it will be overlap. They will overlap only if delta is less than 2 epsilon. Correct? So, what can we uh, conclude from this uh, understanding? Yeah. If at all we pick a wrong arm, the, uh, the difference between the best arm and the wrong arm is at most 2 epsilon. Right? Because that's what we see. If you pick the wrong one, you are at most suboptimal by 2 epsilon. Delta is a suboptimal decor, right? So that means you are at, at most suboptimal by 2 epsilon. That means what is the regret that you can incur? 2 epsilon into T, right? If you do the exploration and then you do a mistake because of overlap and excess. Your regret will go as 2 epsilon into t, right? So, which one? No, this is Huh? No, regret is what? Like, there are only two arms. Uh, when do we get regret? When we pick the bad arm as the best arm. So if you pick the bad arm as the best arm, that means you know that delta is So when will you pick bad arm? So that means what is the regret? First step, you'll incur a regret of delta. Because the difference between mu star and mu of A is delta, right? The first step you will incur a regret of delta. So delta into T is a regret that you can incur first. Thing. Is this not clear? What is regret? This is the regret, right? You can write regret like this, right? T equal to 1 to T mu star minus mu of A. I can write regret like this, right? I'm just Rewriting the mu star t minus sigma over a 
So our regret will be at most two epsilon into t. Is it clear or is it confusing? When delta is greater than epsilon, there is no any regret because the that part that we discovered in our two separate those two arms. So the regret will be at most to epsilon t. Right? All the no, there is only one time we are comparing, right? We are comparing at t equal to 2m. After that, we are not comparing. So we have only one event, right? You explore each of m time, then you compare, then you do you stick to one of right? That's the algorithm. You are comparing only once. We are only talking about good event or bad event during that comparison. We are exploring each of m time, then we have mu bar of a, mu bar of b. We just compare which is better. Then we play the term for the rest of the time. And so, so now we want regret. Uh, yeah. Capital T is the total number of rounds we have. Uh, including the two. So it's like you are given Let's say you are given a chance to play a lottery mission some three times. You have to decide how much time you want to explore, how much time you want to explore. That is up to you. Totally, you'll have T chances. You want to maximize your reward in those T chances. It's accumulated. So now, uh, there are two types of regrets. Right? One is the exploitation phase, right? One is the exploitation phase regret. Exploration regret will be what? We are exploring two m times, like m times arm a, m times arm b. So, what is the regret that you can incur in exploration phase? So, let's say worst case is, uh, uh, worst case is uh, m. Let's say even if you don't use delta, worst case is m, right? Exploration regret is m because there are only two arms. You play the best arm m times and the suboptimal arm m times. Best term, whenever you play best term, you won't incur any regret. So only the remaining M times you can incur a regret. And in each round, what is the maximum regret that you can have? One. So exploration regret. Exploration regret is less than or equal to M. Everyone agrees with this? Because two M times you are exploring. M times you are anyway playing the best arm. M times you are playing the suboptimal arm. Whenever you play suboptimal arm, at most you will get a regret of one because our reward is between zero and one. Right? So if the best arm has a mean one and the suboptimal has arm has a mean zero, you will incur one regret for each round. So M rounds, the total worst case regret that you can incur is M. Right? And exploitation regret. What is it less than or equal to? Uh, T minus uh, 2M into uh, delta. Right? I can take delta. Um, so, and what do we know about delta? Delta is less than or equal to 2 epsilon. Because in the other case, I have a regret of zero. Like if delta is greater than two epsilon, 
and they sold it so i can take this to be either it will be either zero or it will be uh, t minus 2m into 2 epsilon so since i am only caring about an upper bound i can write like this right because if whenever i make a mistake my delta is less than or equal to 2 epsilon So now what is the total regret, uh, expected regret, given uh, good event? This is what I want, right? I am upper bounding that regret as m plus t minus 2m into 2 epsilon. Correct? Because the epsilon is going above. And what uh, was our epsilon? Like uh, we we have chosen already. We have already chosen epsilon, right? What was our epsilon? Root of log t by. Huh? Okay. Epsilon, right? Not m. M plus, uh, anyway, I, uh, I can just write it T into it. Write it as T into 2 epsilon. Okay. Correct. So T minus 2M is less than or equal to T. Correct. Root log t by how much? 2m. So, this is the explanation. So, you can really understand the trade-off between these two, right? If you, if you explore a lot, you have a because the more number of samples negative there is a trade-off. So this is a trade-off. So this is an exploitation, exploration, exploitation trade-off. This is called, if you explore too much, then you uh, explore it in a good You understand the great trade off? So now you, you choose M is in our hands. So you choose whatever M you want to balance this trade off. Okay. So what is the best, uh, best, best M you can choose? Can you just do the uh, differentiation? Tell me what will be a good M to choose. Because any M we can choose, we want to choose them which will give a good bond or a good bond. Maybe one heuristic is just uh, take these two terms to be equal. Like just the heuristic. One is increasing with them, one is decreasing with them. So maybe just as a heuristic, I just choose an M which satisfies this question. Okay. Now what do we do? M power 3 by 2 equal to Two T root of T M equal to T. 
So I can choose whatever M I want. Let's say I choose this particular M. So what will be my regret? Huh? Did I make any mistake? So what will this people do? Can you do? Can you do? Okay. Which term? Where? Which one? Yeah. So you can do a tighter analysis, but all the time uh, going to show you if it's going to incur a sublinear regret. Like even if you do tighter analysis, maybe you'll get the constants better. But what is known is this is the order wise, this is the best that you can do. So what is the regret that they're incurring finally? So so no, what is the Okay, so what I'll do, I'll say this order of uh, okay. so what is the order of the order of the order of the order of t root log t 2 power 3 by 3. So the regret the regret will also be order of this, right? Because it's 2 into that, 2 into m for this case. So this is like order of t power 2 by 3. It's not linear regret, it's uh, sublinear. So then say, no, what is regret? M plus so where m is so and this is a good event right into probability of good event is less than or equal to one so this whole regret for due to good event is less than or equal to this much and regret due to bad event we already proved it is less than or equal to four like four by t into t so that is uh, plus four you will get it just plus four so the total regret is order of this right
sir take the first one right so this is less than or equal to 1 minus 4 by t so 4 by t like that is less than or equal to this right so let's just to keep everything clear so problem like expected regret is equal to expected regret given good event plus into probability of good event plus expected regret given bad into probability of bad okay so what did we prove about good event regret order of t power 2 by 3 log power 1 by 3 This is what we have proved for the good event uh, thing into one minus four by t, right? Plus t into four by t, right? This is t. So these things are getting cancelled, and uh, this is less than or equal to order of correct. If I only get the constant. So, any doubts in the group? So, we have we have been able to use the concentration inequalities which we learned to guarantee something about explore then the material one. So, uh, as I said before, uh, the best algorithm, whatever algorithm you come up with. Even the best algorithm will incur a regret of at least root t. So we have if we have got arbitrary one by two, then we are already got plus one plus. But uh, we are having more t equal to by three. Okay. So this is not the best algorithm, but uh, this is better than a naive algorithm of just uh, doing any arm. Because if you know, go randomly, you are getting the order of t. Now we are getting the order of t. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'll end uh, by giving one exercise. So here we are getting here we are getting the order of t. We are getting the regret, right? So. Right now, we don't assume that we know the knowledge of delta, right? We are not using delta knowledge anywhere, right? Because how are we choose? What is the only parameter that is there in our algorithm to decide how many times you have to explore? So how many times are we exploring? We are exploring this many times. So how many times are we exploring? Uh, we are just deciding it just based on the knowledge of Capital T. We are just using the information about capital T, right? So let's say someone comes and gives you delta. You don't know which term is good, but you know that the best term and the worst term are at most off by, let's say, 0.1. Someone tells you that number. Someone comes and gives you delta. Can you make use of that information and decide M in a better way? Okay. So if someone gives you delta, you can show that uh, you can incur a regret of order of log t by delta. ETC regret is explore then commit algorithm regret is order of log t by delta if delta is known. You have to design the algorithm. What m you have to choose, you have to tell me. 
But if you choose them properly using the information about delta, you can come up with an algorithm, you can come up with an M, which will give you a result of order of log T by delta. So you can take this as an exercise. So the main thing is uh, to choose your, uh, your principal factor, uh, the Okay, so you can uh, try this and you can see. Yeah, this is when you don't know delta, the best you can do is log t, uh, root t. 